I want to first welcome you to Gaza Media uh, for this short brief. I will not call it an interview, but just to have a little bit of conversation with you uh, concerning the activities of Legda USA, which is the BLM Development and Cultural Organization. Uh, recently, the fire is out, talking about the convention that is coming on on the 31st and the first 31st of May and 1st of June. Uh, 2024. Previous convention, we talked about the Agenda 28, the five year development plan, and there were issues that were being discussed. Now, the theme of the convention, or rather, the vision has changed to the five year development plan. Why was it changed? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kumba. First of all, I want to congratulate you for you. The great milestone uh, you you achieve, which is why we are here in West Virginia, and again, we really thank you. In the midst of everything, you have your guests out there. There are so many people living, and in the midst of all that, you still showing your love for community. You are still able to pull yourself away from the people and give me this opportunity uh, to say something about Legda like USA. Yes, uh, last year when we ended the convention, we had Chief Afue as a keynote speaker and we came up with Agenda 28. And now today we are talking about uh, the Libyan uh, Paradise 2050. And again, how do we get there? You know, uh, at times we have to be realistic with the things that we say. Uh, you cannot turn the BLM into paradise in five years, you know. So when the board met after that, we sat and uh, did a lot of consultation to come up with a roadmap. Mm -hmm. And we saw that it can only be realistic yes. and with the different timelines that you have in the BLM Paradise video, uh, video. It can only be realistic that we pick one project, complete it, pick another, complete it. And by 2050, we should be able uh, to turn the BLM in, into what we want. So Agenda 28 by itself is not completely out of the picture. Agenda 28 kind of uh, comes in that by 2028, every single project that you see on the BLM Paradise uh, 2050 will not just be the videos that we are watching, but it should be something that, they have been, that we have been able to come up with a clear rope map like you see credit union, it will not just be a video that they are, they are projecting, but they must have had subcommittees that we do feasibility studies, and we have a clear, a clear path on how that will be achieved. It is not a one-day thing. Okay, yes. <clears throat> yes, talking about uh, projects, because sometimes you present a video, an idea, sometimes people want practicality to say, mm -hmm. okay, uh, the next convention is coming. What are some of the projects that actually emerge, concretizing that? The thing, if we do this, and we, all, we are starting doing this, and this is what has already been impacted, and this is an example of what we are saying, what will you say would that kind of project be? Or oh, do you, or throughout the year, since when you came to office in September, I know it wasn't in May as previously, mm -hmm. so you probably lost about a couple of months. So what would that kind of project be? So, uh, director, uh, there is an area that where I, I gain inspiration from. You know, I, it, there, we have so many fandom and village associations going on. But where I feel like we can actually tackle something like the BLM and succeed, my inspiration, inspiration comes from Leg Their Life. That is a project that is not owned by a sort of Lebang Olewo. It is the program that is owned by Legda USA. And you see the kind of improvement. You see how it is growing. You see how it is sustainable. And I begin to ask myself, is only a fraction of the BLM people in, involved in this? And so, if we can replicate that, because if you have not been able to achieve anything, if you don't have a model that you are trying to take and apply into other aspects of development, 
you might you might just be walking out of imagination but in this case it's not walking out of imagination i've seen that the blm people can actually achieve something working yeah. as a unit especially listen especially when you have people who are honest and transparent who with accountability one thing that has almost killed us is lack of trust which comes from lack of accountability or dishonesty because people take give money if somebody is not able to manage ten thousand dollars you give them millions that we are talking in this in the sense of uh, uh, gathering resources towards the blm paradise they will simply squander it it is in our past i know it will take us time to work ourselves to where we gain the people's trust but they start from small things and the small thing that like that is doing is the like that life uh, yeah I, I know for sure like that life has been i mean it may have started in the very rough setting but i think it has picked up momentum and it's doing well um you're, you're not cutting you short director now in the areas of what have we achieved so far since we took office you know i try i try director and i'm bringing you back to this uh because libya alone people i am trying not to be one of the ceos that come rally people do a public gesture to say this is what i'd achieve and then run away if i were to do that i have and we have enough money in the coffers of like the usa that will have done a gesture gather people and say hey like, uh, gaza media this is what i've done Th that that it is not a bad thing, mm -hmm. you know, but it doesn't move us forward. I want us to move past some a CEO coming to gather a few $50 from left and right, go do something, and that is the end of it. And then the next CEO comes and goes back to the drawing board. I am trying to, uh, with the board, together with the board, we are trying to put an end to all this, uh, oh, yes, recycling, if it, it can happen. But it shouldn't be all about it. it uh, where we live, in West Virginia, if you go to, it, we, there's a lot of forest here. But trust me, if you go behind the scene, you will see that the people here, they already know how some areas of the town are going to look like even 20 years from, from today. It's not something that you get up. That is the kind of, uh, and if I end up as, as the CEO of the BLM without realizing a, a, a single project mm -hmm. by being able to have a roadmap, create a structure that the next CEO comes and just they get into implementation. Right now, there is no structure in the BLM. There is no structure with regard to the future of the BLM. If you ask, as I sit here, other than the video that I projected, which we are now going to sit and see how we can piece it together to make it into a real, real, realizable project. Mm -hmm. You know, other than that, there is nothing. I mean, I feel, yes, that means, that means we lack kind of something like institution. Yes. Just, uh, even the next person coming in, you, you can just say, okay, everything has already been. These are the guidelines, this is what we have to work on. We're we'll not coming and begin to think of what to do. I, I get that. Yeah, you mentioned about the gathering the $50 uh, annual this statement. It has been a challenge. And I remember in the last convention, it was proposed. I don't recall if it was ever adopted to $125. But the board went and sat, discussed, and made this resolution, and uh, you sent out a communique uh, that the board has changed their mind uh, and bring it back to $50. What do you think is making people not to contribute? Well, um, I, you know, I was the CFO before uh, being the CEO. Yeah. So it is too early uh, to conclude that uh, something is making people not to come. No, no, I mean, in the, like, yes. in the previous CEO. That I'm not just talking about this year. Yeah. That has always made the BN people not to always contribute. I'm so I, there is a is, is, uh, lack of trust, you know. Uh, people, when I was, I know this because I did a lot of reach out as a CFO to encourage people to contribute. And 
some people claim that the past administration had not been giving them accountability. It doesn't matter if you drop a ten dollars, at least they should be able to come back and say this is how the money was used. That that is one of the reasons. One other explanation, which unfortunately is something that we have to fight against. It's like some, somebody wants to drop a stone and then run and see where it will drop. This is a whole thing of a mentality that I'm contributing this money. I come from a sorta, or I come from the World Oil Bank. Uh, if I bring this money to the table, what is a sorta going to gain? What is the bank going to gain? Like I said, it's a, a question of mentality and we have to preach to let people understand that at, uh, uh, it, 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 that, that we have to come together they see the need to, to, to function as one without boundaries and trust that when they pull these resources together and we want to develop the BLM, we are going to look at the map. We cannot develop the entire BLM all at once. Like if they are constructing a road or they are building a hospital, you cannot go to every section of the BLM to go construct, the, uh, 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 I mean, to make it yeah. fair, mm -hmm. you know, and that that brings me some, I have been ap approached by so many people that, oh, this you see in Chem from coming up, Lekudo, Egda, Mwakudo, uh, 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 Mukuda, all these organizations that there is, they all have their own agenda and they are contributing there. Why, why do we need uh, Legda? You know, some people see that as a disadvantage. I see that as an advantage, you know, because if we already have in our grand scheme an, an aspect to do with education, and then you have strong fundums that can that are also functioning with an executive, it really helps because when it comes to an, to the time that you want to carry this project in a project in a particular fundum, you simply work with an existing institution that is already there to implement it. Yes, which therefore means that you, uh, you encourage uh, fundum to also live with the uh, uh, LEGDA as an umbrella organization, if you will, federal system versus state. Absolutely. If you are a father, you are not a strong father if you have weak kids. Right? You don't pray that your kids should not be strong because you want to remain strong as a father. You pray that your kids should be str the stronger your kid, the more you are. The stronger the fundamental associations, the stronger like the USA. So uh, it becomes a responsibility for me to see how I can pull them together, bring the fundamentals together to for us to work on a table to have a, an, a, an organization that people will admire. So now uh, we said in about four weeks from now, uh, we'll be having the next convention stay again in Maryland. Maryland. How about the preparation, committee-wise, logistics, in such a way that it shouldn't be like last year? So uh, last year was rough, for lack of a better word. Uh, I remember I went to GC last year. I was one buying drinks and running around and doing some errands and I was really exhausted before the end of the convention. Uh, this year, um, things are different. Uh, we are still working on having an active chapter in Maryland, but in the meantime, we have the convention organizing committee. They are doing a fabulous job. You know, it's chaired by Dinkama uh, Lempayos, Dr. Anu Simon, and Honorable Ponin Nembo, from Wabani, mm -hmm. and the committee's chairs were strategically take, uh, chosen to make sure that we cover all our bases, you know. So we are planning, and one of the things that they are doing is that all the chapter and fundum uh, uh, chapters within the DC, they, have, they are visiting their local meetings. They have gone to Lekudo, they have gone to Mwakudo, they have gone to, they will be going to a sort of today. They go give a presentation selling this 2050 agenda and creating momentum. You know, these, these are the things that they are, they, are, uh, they are doing. And Friday, 
uh, I want to seize this opportunity to really put it out there. Uh, it is high time we don't limit the development of the BLM in the hands of adults. We try to get the, the youth with the technology that is out yeah, there. Exactly. When, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you go out without the youth, you are going to be stuck because you know, there are some technological challenges that you they have to break through. So we need the youth. And if you are building an organization like this, you want the youth involved for sustainability. So when we sat and we brainstormed on this, somebody came up with the idea of uh, a, 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 a soccer tournament, mm -hmm. you know, or a soccer match mm -hmm. on Friday. And that is done. They, they, they are already printing the, the medals. They will order a trophy. And it will be done less than $500 in the, in the mm -hmm. trophy. And the, we, we gather the youth from the BLM. We are not saying it's what I should play the bank. No, we they get the, the youth from the BLM, have two captains, they, they, they fall behind two teams, and they play an entertainment match to grace Friday evening before the barbecue. But most importantly, that is going to give our youth the opportunity to, to, to network among themselves. Somebody from a sort of can be in the same team with somebody from Wabani, they exchange phone numbers. And that trophy will be handed to the youth on the evening of Saturday, to the winning team, you know? And that will also help pull the youth to come and we all sit in the same hall. Okay, Mr. CEO, um, before we, we wrap up, at least, the development due for this year remains fifty dollars. Yes, uh, speaking to that, that is the minimum. Uh, when they presented the ABLM Paradise Vision, it, the package that was adopted by the General Assembly came together with a breakdown of one hundred and twenty-five dollars a year, and they were tar targeting um, two thousand people. Now, when we launched it, originally the spreadsheet was designed for the 125. You know, uh, we at the board. Mm -hmm. The board is made out of uh, fundum and chapter presidents. So you take feedbacks from those people. So when they went, the first thing is that people were not prepared. Not everybody. Mm -hmm. 125. 125. And not everybody who was prepared could afford the 125. So you see that we, you don't raise the bar. Like right now, we have uh, Chief Afwe in the Hall of Fame contributing $1,000 in addition. And you're going to have people at that level. But trust me, you are still going to have people from the BLM who cannot even contribute the 50. And so strategically, you don't set the bar and say it must be here. And then you make it impossible for people who are willing but cannot reach that level. That is why we say, you know what, well, we have already things in such a way that you will have the 125, you have the bronze, the silver, the gold, the platinum, and the Hall of Fame. People who get inspired, they can contribute into any of those categories. But in the meantime, it's good to have a, a minimum where people can feel, I mean, at $50 in America, you, you, I mean, you really think that so anybody who is inspired should be able to give $50 without struggling. That, so that is the it is the minimum is fifty, but we still encourage uh, the BLM son and daughters uh, to buy into this. The many people we have, the better, so we can actually build the funds that we need to to begin implementing the twenty fifty vision, the BLM Parallel Vision. Uh, uh, still, thank you, uh, thank you for taking a little bit of time to explain some of this issue affecting us, uh, the BLM community here in the US and also at home. Uh, we'll be waiting for more updates as the convention time pushes. Again, uh, thank you, dear viewers, for attention to Gaza Media. Uh, my name is Ernest. Uh, I'm the anchor for this morning. Again, uh, have a good day.